Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and once again, as is tradition, it's time for the post-game report. So how did the Guilds of Ravnica pre-release go? Well, honestly, it was a lot worse than I thought. Some stores were actually letting people pick their preference, which, that's weird. I mean, my store has always done it just 100% random, you know, even for, uh, like, Planeswalker deck challenges or anything else, dual decks, whatever. Well, especially Planeswalker decks, because one is always clearly better than the other. Well, let me just clue you in. Um, Convoke is virtually unplayable. You really have to build your entire deck around it. You can get lucky, and you can get, like, good Convoke bombs, but just to be able to draw them on time and put just the right amount of creatures out that can stay out and be able to maintain your life total, it's very delicate, and you have to very much design it. You can't just kind of throw it together. But it turns out from all the games I was seeing, I mean, first of all, everybody... Everybody was pissed at their deck, unless they had, like, you know, the Divine Perfect deck, which, you know, a couple people always get that. People were not happy with their deck at all. I wasn't, and if people are unhappy with their deck, they're going to have a bad time. So, you know, we're still dicking around, telling jokes, whatever, but it was a completely different mood than the last pre-release. It, it just really, really was. M19, you could put anything together, some cool bombs, whatever. Dominaria, that was cool, because... Nothing really worked together. It was just, oh, a good card, a kind of good card. Ah, this is the best color. Cool, let's do it. And everybody's deck was different. This seemed like a Planeswalker deck battle. I mean, it was just everybody was playing the same cards because there was obviously acceptable undergrowth cards and then unplayable undergrowth cards and then there was acceptable convoke cards and unacceptable convoke cards. So everybody's decks ended up looking the same. It was just a question of who pulled better cards. And the people who pulled better cards absolutely obliterated everybody else. I mean, they clear as day they were going to win. So I can't even remember the last time where it was like this much pull your way to victory. Well, and then the games got really boring and repetitive because, you know, you, you saw the card, you know what the cards do, you know what the mechanics do, everybody built it. So the way that I explained it to somebody, because people weren't getting this, this is why seeded packs are garbage. And I'll get into the second reason too. The first reason is if you just open up six packs and build something out of it, plus a promo, how many different combinations and strategies and just, you know, just purely color mixes could you come up with? Because you should just go to the two best piles and be like, yeah, these are remotely acceptable together. Boom, let's play these two. Well, white can pair with four other colors and then black can pair with four other colors. So I think it's, boy, I, it's 5 a.m. There's at least 20 combinations. That, that feels low. I thought it was like 150. I don't know. Who knows? You had three colors an option, which I really wouldn't recommend under most circumstances at the pre-release, but it does kind of work. It's probably over 100 combinations, well over 100. So you have no idea what you're going up against. This was just, eh, there's that deck again. Eh, Undergrowth, eh, Boros, eh, Convoke, eh. The only thing that made it interesting was, you know, how many awesome super bombs they got from the rare mythic slot, really, and, uh... And like I said, I mean, whoever pulled the best cards won. It, it, it's as simple as that. Like, you couldn't build your way out of it. You couldn't just cleverly play your way out of it in most cases. It was just straight up, oh, look, the king of the Convoke deck. Oh, look, the best, you know, whatever card for whatever guild. It was really annoying, really stupid. And the worst part was getting any kind of synergy going was impossible it, in the average deck. Like I said, some people had some amazing decks, but... um. Not mine. So the second reason that uh, seeded pre-release packs are bad is what I mentioned mostly in the last video, which was um, I got a Boros pack, and that's cool. I wanted to play Boros because I thought, well, even if I get no synergy and no mentor, whatever, mentor is just a side thing. You got to mix it with board wipes and boost and counter drop. I'll just have creatures in removal. Two removal colors, two creature colors. Let's do it. Well, as it turns out, no, we're not doing anything. All five of my other packs had virtually zero support for Boros. So I had to build a Boros deck with the seeded pack. Oh, and the promo. So I, I know that none of the rares or mythics were um, Boros. I know that none of the foils were as well, just to throw that in there. I got a couple just garbage filler commons and maybe one or two uncommons. That was it. The entire rest of my boosters were basically Golgari and Demeanor. I got no more lockets, I got no more guild gates on color, nothing. So for the fourth round, I actually ended up just building a three-color deck with the entire rest, and I would say that that three-color deck with uh, Demir Golgari, which is what I built, uh, probably better than my Boros deck. So, I mean, when it worked, it worked. I mean, I actually beat somebody, I think, in six minutes. I was the first one done. I mean, when Mentor runs you over and you're just, like, swinging with... 
like something and then oh they're both two bigger and then they're both two bigger and then you boost them now they're both six bigger like the 20 goes pretty damn quick so in three games i absolutely destroyed the people the problem is that's wonderful that was the good half of the deck the other half of the deck was filler garbage and the funny thing is i had like six or seven removal spells i mean like it, it wasn't bad for a pre-release but it was bad for boros and if, if you can't get mentor to work one time i was sitting with two attack two attack two attack two attack wonderful no auras no equipment no temporary boost and no counter dump you're not going to get mentor to work it's really just that simple so if the stars aligned and i got good mentor targets i would just run the person over and they didn't play enough control you know which hello it's pre-release that's why i like boros but i just couldn't get it to work um i had a mostly losing record i won i won one round and i think i won a grand total of like four matches so it was pretty crap also thanks wizards your stupid piece of shit tournament software put me up against the best person in the entire place that was undefeated in round two so i had lost in three and they put me up against somebody who won in two not only that but they had two foil assassins trophies and a vraska in their deck one was promo, one was foil, by the way, for the Assassin's Trophies. Wonderful. So they had an over $200 deck, and that's who they paired me up against. Now, I have had confirmation from, from somebody who knows how this works that normally, logically, I should have been tied, or I should have been paired up against anybody who tied, which I guess nobody did, or somebody who won one and then tied to get three points, so they technically only won one game, or somebody who won, but they won in three. They went two and one. Because if they went two and one and I went, you know, two and one but lost, we're the closest. Theoretically, our decks should be the closest. They put me up against, I think, the person who came in first eventually. I think they swept. I don't think they even lost a damn game. So round two was screwed. By the way, that one that boosts people based on undergrowth, he had bare minimum two of them, probably three. I saw two. So I had absolutely zero chance of winning which i really don't like having zero percent chance of winning i was getting pretty pissed off about that and there was a lot of people there so let's just pretend there was like even like one of my old uh, lgs there would be like 50 people there or more i've been to ones with over 100 theoretically one person or maybe two should get paired incorrectly it's always me at every pre-release, every FNM. It's always me. It's always been me. And I guess it's always going to be me. So thanks, Wizards. And then, like I said, they paired me up against somebody who went 2-0. and oh. Like, what, what sense does that make? So honestly, if I could go back in time and tell myself, don't bother. You're, you're going to get a shit pool. And you're going to get paired up unfairly. And it's going to be complete garbage. And I opened complete garbage cards. Nobody had fun. It just, it was, it was a complete waste of my time and money and sleep time and everything. And I had to get up at like 830 in the morning today to fill out paperwork. That was fun. So yeah, the whole thing honestly was just a disaster. It's one of the worst ones I've ever been to. And I've been to about 30. I seriously thought I'm going back on Saturday. It's just not worth my time. It's one of the worst build arounds I've ever seen. And that's the thing. That's what's inherently wrong is one, you're never going to get a good undergrowth deck or a good mentor deck or a good anything because you're only going to have like a third of the cards you need compared to what it was built for what it was designed for which is four of four of four of four of cool i put together the perfect deck because that's what they play test they play test the major mechanic not some obscure weird mix of whatever which is what people eventually play but the real blatant just oh i'm gonna do that you know like uh, vampires dinosaurs pirates and whoever the hell else was there merfolk those douchebags um, they tested those to make sure that in an ideal circumstance and the ideal way to build them, that they were fairly balanced and not just completely overpowered, except Merfolk, apparently. So if they're meant to be pretty fair and appropriate power level for standard when you handpick all the cards, you have to go all in. I mean, with Mentor, it has to be pretty all in in that you've got to have, like, like I said, board wipes, boosts, temporary boosts, whatever. You've got to be able to make it work and protect them. Without that, it's just going to be, can they blow up my giant dude or not? Oh, they did. Cool. Or no, they didn't. Wow, what a fast game. It's just stupid. Undergrowth? Well, yeah, damn well better have the perfect self-mill. Probably mix it with Demir. You know, get a lot of surveil going so that you can get to your control. And you got to have enough control to cover long enough to play long enough that you don't lose on, like, turn five, six, or seven. And it's very particular, very tight of a deck list to play Undergrowth or really anything with surveil at all. Like surveil synergy, you need the triggers and you need the surveil and they need to be in a very uh, distinct mathematical amount each. Instead, you got a pile of crap that just says, here, make this work. 
So people are getting undergrowth counts of like one, two, and people are just like, I don't know, I guess I'll play this. You know, just people are just pissed about how the deck doesn't flow at all and everybody's decks malfunction. They just didn't work because they need to be perfect. So when you're just pigeonholed into five options, because remember, there's five options, that's it. You're, you're going to play one of the guilds, if you would even call is it an option. They're, they are not going to win a damn thing at the pre-release. Instants and sorceries do not win you the pre-release if you don't have a flawless amount of like storm and charge counters and resurrection. So you really have four options. As far as I could see, just kind of looking around, because um, we had table numbers, uh, the entire top eight was Demir Golgari. There was a couple exceptions, like my friend went 3-1 and one with Boros because he opened, like, God's gift to the Boros deck. It was, like, the flawless mentor control deck. He ended up playing with, like, 50-something cards because there was just nothing to cut. So, yeah, it's possible. You can make anything work with, you know, perfect cards. It's just, probability-wise, it's probably not going to happen. So, yeah, everybody was just stuck with malfunctioning crap. People with all the luck that pulled all the best cards not only got the most value in their cards, but also won. So, that was fun. So, they won even more prizes. Great. And uh, a lot of people want to Golgari just for the money. So, and a couple of people hit Assassin's Trophy and most of them didn't. And then they're stuck playing Golgari, which honestly turned out was one of the better ones as long as you got some, you know, surveil support for it. And uh, like I thought, Convoke was the entire bottom end of the tournament bracket. That deck couldn't get off the ground at all. Is it uh, about the same? Somehow we had almost nobody playing Is it? I guess just that's how they handed them out. I don't know. Seems weird. Maybe they're holding them because they think it'll be worth more because it's going to be pretty powerful and standard. But uh, I don't know. Did you guys have a different experience? A lot of people are like, oh, Des, you're wrong because my deck was good. Well, you're one person and I was looking at a hell of a lot more than one person. Okay, I was paying close attention so I can do a video about it. And also just, you know, taking a step back and saying, should the mathematics of it, of how this should work and how the cards should pattern together based on rarity and probability, does that match what I saw? And the answer is yes. So overall, I'd say it's one of the worst sets ever designed for uh, pre-release. Now for draft, it would be quite good. And they even said it's designed for draft, but that's because you will draft a guild and you can pick good cards. I mean, with this one, you're just stuck with whatever you're stuck with and that just doesn't work. So if you miss Friday or if you're thinking about going to one Saturday or even if you do Sunday, Monday, who the hell knows what your store is up to, um, I, I just wouldn't. I would skip it. I would not recommend it in any way, shape, or form. There, It's just not worth it. If they hold a draft event, wonderful. Honestly, it's draft weekend next weekend, by the way, so just go to that. But I would not recommend this at all. I'd honestly give it about a 1 out of 10 for, for sealed quality. It's just terrible. The majority of the people just ended up with half-working, half-built garbage and a bunch of filler and a bunch of crap, and nobody was happy. So thanks, wizards. Well, I'll see you next pre-release.